Joe Mancini, hot player a couple of years ago, has kind of gone downhill since then, but he beat Eric Yale in today. 7-5, 6-4, and 6-2. And Goran Ivanisevic, who has not played particularly well coming into this tournament, did drop a set to Frederick Fontaine of uh, France, but he wins at 6-4, 6-1, 1-6, 6-3, and 6-1. Wally Mazur of Australia, perhaps a little bit better fast court player, wins at 7-6, 6-1, 6-4. He's on through to the second round. Varian Vajda of Czechoslovakia is a winner as well over Nicholas Kroon. I would say that has to fall in the category of good win for Vajda of Czechoslovakia. So that is what has happened up to date. We are watching an outstanding match going, going on right now on Court Central. Pete Sampras has won a set and has gotten himself back into the match with Tomas Muster. We will get you back to that match as well when we come back for the second day of competition in the Centennial French Open Tennis Tournament. Don't go away. Between Pete Sampras and Tomas Muster, and there to tell you all about it, Tip Drysdale and Fred Stalling. Thanks, Barry Tompkins. It has turned into a great match. In fact, it has been a well-played match from the beginning with Pete Sampras trying to find his feet, but he has found them. And what you are looking at now is the fourth set of this match with Sampras just having won the, uh, the third set. He has the break. That was break point that you just saw. So Sampras will serve at two games to love. Yeah, of course, it's a big can, turnaround. It is, and you can see just with the way Pete Sampras is getting around the court cliff now, he was very frustrated after that second set, and halfway through the third set, he was able to win the third set, and now he believes. You can see when if he misses something, he's sort of getting all tensed up and saying, well, golly, another inch and I'd have made that one. And, uh, so he's now believing that he can get his teeth into this match. He has a break in the fourth. He is there. And the, the thought rip. may be going through Thomas Muster's mind that, uh, hey, I haven't really been playing that well this year and I've only won a couple of clay court matches mm -hmm. and maybe this guy's getting back into it. That certainly will help Sampras. 15 low. Okay. For the record, Sampras of the USA, living in Bradenton, Florida now. 19 years old, the youngest player to win the US Open. In what was a big surprise last year, of course, think about all of the surprises that you've seen lately. Michael Chang, who'd have bet on him two years ago here at the French Championship? Who'd have bet on him at the U.S. Open this year? He thought he was going to win a tournament like Wimbledon before he'd win the, yeah. the, uh, the U.S. Open. So did a lot of other folks. He's starting to vary his serve a little better. Things have changed uh, from the days when people wondered who would play against Bjorn Borg in the final, Fred. That was the only question, really. There was never any question but that he was going to win the tournament. Now these are so wide open. I mean, the number one and two seeds, neither one of them, Becker or Edberg, are clay court experts. Well, particularly now with uh, Lendl having to withdraw because of injury. But, you know, this, this match here could be one of the best lessons of this young man's life if he can turn this around having lost the first two sets mm -hmm. and he has a very good shot at it now leading two games to love and 40 15 or he has a good shot at least for getting to a fifth and deciding set Pete Sampras, three games to love in the fourth set, two sets to one for Muster of Austria. We'll be back with more live coverage after this. Cliff Drysdale, Fred Stolle, welcome back everybody. Coverage of the first round, second day here at the French Championships, Roland Garros, three games to love, Pete Sampras, two sets to one down, playing Thomas Muster, Muster serving.
15. Mind you that he went uh, through orthoscopic surgery again in uh, mid-March to repair ligaments in his uh, left knee that were originally hurt in March 89 before the final of the Lipton against Ivan Lendelfred. That may be a factor here, of course. That's wide game point for Thomas Muster. Of course, you never know. He certainly doesn't look like he lacks mobility at this point. No, I don't think it's a matter of lacking mobility, Cliff. I, I think he, he told us in the interview that uh, he was a couple of months away from being as fit as he would want to be. But uh, fit for Thomas Muster. Yeah, I was just going to say, <laughs> his definition of fit is yeah. different from most. Game point. And of course, the way he plays, he has to be pretty fit to the amount of energy that he expends with throwing the weight of shot off both topspin forehand and backhand. But uh, when he had that leg injury from the Lipton, he was in a plastic cast, was back on the court in a couple of weeks in a wheelchair that he had specially made so he could hit tennis balls. That is long, so Thomas Muster wins his first game of the fourth set. It's three games to one, Pete Sampras, two sets to one for Thomas Muster. And now let's go back to Barry Tompkins, who does the business that makes this whole event work for us, Barry. A little bit of business here, and the fact that I was just musing a little bit with Mary Carrillo about the fact that there's been so many great moments just in the three years that I've had the pleasure of doing these French Open tournament broadcasts, and Mary Carrillo, of course, back goes, a, goes a, little, a little bit further back here than I do, and right now she has a look at another great moment with a great player. Let's take you back to 1982. The player was Mats Wielander against Guillermo Villas. <laughs> The Musketeers' Cup was within tantalizing reach of one-time winner Guillermo Villas. Surely he would beat Mats Villander, a 17-year-old who'd never before won a professional event. But Villander, the junior champion here a year earlier, went after this championship with a heady mix of both patience and attack. After beating Garolaitis in the quarters and Jose Luis Clerc in the semis, he dropped the first set, then never looked back. One year earlier, the great Bjorn Borg left this court in triumph, never to return. Now there was another Swede to celebrate in the 80s, winning his first of three titles. It started some heady times for Mats V. Lander, but he has fallen on hard times over the last couple of years. He simply has struggled with his tennis game. He comes into the French Open even more than a long shot. Hardly anyone gives, himself much, gives him much of a chance, and that may include himself. But right now, he is playing right below us on court number 11. Mary Carrillo has joined me here. And Mats V. Lander actually playing fairly well against Leonardo Lavalle of Mexico. Well, he's very nearly won this match. It's 5-2 in the third now. V. Lander took the first two. I agree with you, Barry. I mean, he's he's very much a long shot for a, you know, for a guy who has won this title three times. But he's putting together some good tennis. Uh, Lavalle, I think, is such a talented left-hander who's never lived up up to his potential at all. He's going to go down. The Mats Vilander now with an opportunity to serve this one out. Vilander, 59 in the world is his ranking now. In '88, when he won three of the four Grand Slams, the first guy to do that since '74 when. Jimmy Connors won three out of four. 89, he didn't win one title. In fact, uh, you can really count the matches he won on, on your hands. 90 was a tough year for Villander as well. He lost his father. He lost, uh, again, he struggled with motivation and concentration. He had some physical problems. He had shin splints. 
He looks a little bit better this year. He really does. Is it, is it more mental than physical now for him? I think it is. I, I mean, he's fit. And, uh, you know, Lavalle has not been a great test for him. Uh, so it's hard to know just how well Mott's is playing. But he's got to feel happy with the way uh, it's a packed court out there, as you can see. So many people remember very fondly the Vlander of old, and they'd love to see him come back. One of the good guys on the tennis circuit. Now, two points from this match. No, it's not. I should put For Mats Vilander to sail, and that may be the right word, into the second round of this tournament. It is mental, getting a couple of quick wins, impressive wins, feeling that he's comfortable on this surface again could do wonders for him. Uh, he hasn't played that well. He didn't have a good play season going into this, and that's why a match like this, uh, a win like this, should really help Vilander for the rest of the fortnight. No question about the skill of the man. He's won here before. He knows what it's like to win in a major tournament. He is through to the second round, and he is through rather easily against Leonardo Lavalle. So Matt Vilander, man of the moment. Meanwhile, on Court Central, we have been watching the match between Pete Sampras and Thomas Muster, and Sampras more than just getting back into this match. Let's go back to Cliff and Fred. Very well. We're loving it. Here. It is, uh, it's just very scintillating stuff from both players. You know, we knew exactly what was going to happen. It is really a story here of Pete Sampras trying to make his move at the right time, and he has gotten a lot better at it these last two sets. He leads 4-1 now in the fourth set. Just one service break, but Sampras has uh, come into his own as far as his serve is concerned and uh, he broke a string in the racket he's picked up a new racket on the change over here found the range on the forehand not anywhere near as many there, as you can see, him testing this racket. He's just picked it up, broke a string on serve in the last game. But it's just that one service game, but 4-1 and love 30. That's, uh, if he can win this game, a big break for the youngster. Musto wants him to check the mark. Let's see. It was called good. I thought it touched. So the rally continues. You heard yeah. the umpire, Philippe Wauvin, say, I thought it touched, so the rally continues. The point continues. I see. And it only has to touch the outside of the line there, Cliff. And from our vantage point, it looks looks that way yeah what uh, Philippe well, the point he's making Fred is that the rally continued you know yeah. in other words uh, he you got to do what uh, what Musta did earlier which was as soon as you want to question a call you got to stop the ball right then uh, and and then ask the guy to go uh, to do his thing but uh, unless you do that you can't do it after the point is over this is break point still three break points first one saved 1540. This is for the second break here for Sampras in the fourth set. Trails two sets to one. 1540. There is the second break. Five games to one, and Sampras will serve. Well, boy, have things turned around here, Fred. Wasn't it just uh, 30 minutes ago that we were just talking about, about how this man uh, really didn't know how to play on clay? Well, I still don't think he knows how to play on clay. Cliff, the experience that he's getting here is, is marvelous, and he could very well come out and win this match, and it'll be a great turnaround. The first two sets, he was very close, but he couldn't convert on the big point. He's now serving much better, getting a much bigger percentage of first serves, and he's cut down on the errors, and in the last couple of games he's been floating backhand returns into the net, and uh, Most has made some errors and has tried a few topspin lobs, and they've come up short. Well, Pete Sampras has got one of the best overheads in the business. You mean floating backhand returns over the net, Fred? Yep. <laughs> not, well, not into the net. 
floating backhand return approach shots where he's right, been yeah. going in there and uh, Muster has had trouble with his topspin lobs. I knew that's what you meant. Oh, Look at that. That's the thing that is beginning to make the big difference in this match. Not easy to serve with that kind of consistency on these slow red clay courts here at Roland Garros, but if anybody can do them, he's one of them. Edberg is the other. You saw that two years ago when he got to the final. 30 love. Place is jammed now with spectators. They understand just what's at stake here. in the fifth set and of course we haven't got there yet but we probably will you will see again this classic confrontation of uh, aggression and defense it's not like you've got two defensive players just going to moonball each other it's not going to happen in this match and that makes for excitement 30-15 look at that well as an old servant volleyer on clay I'm impressed by the way he's serving here because he's going what I term wide and wide and he's been able to mix it up. So what he's doing, he's taking Muster out wide to the backhand side here and he's serving on the ad court. He's serving to Muster's forehand more so than the backhand. So he's taking him and opening up the court to give him a couple of opportunities and then he can go down with his big serve down the feet. Great stuff from the US Open champ Pete Sampras. Two in a row now. It's two sets all. We'll be back. We're in the fifth set here at Roland Garros, first round of the men's singles, second day of our coverage here from Paris that has put on its very finest for the early days of the French Championship. Thank goodness, what a nice start to what is going to be clearly a great championship here, the 1991 French Open Championship centennial year. This is Thomas Muster serving first game, set five. Well, only the players know how difficult it is, Cliff, in a situation like this. Best of five sets on a slow red clay court to come back and win after losing the first two sets. It doesn't happen that often. It's one of the toughest things in our sport. If you ask any of the players the toughest tournament of the Grand Slams to win, I guarantee 90% of them will come up and say the French. Absolutely. Well, the other thing that you have to remember is, you know, the, the momentum would clearly seem to be on Pete Sampras's side, but I don't know how many folks came up to me after that, watching that Gustafsson Novacek match from Germany. Finish in a moment. And said, uh, how could it have happened? How could Novacek win? Because the, the fourth set, uh, he, I, I don't remember, he either didn't win a game or he only won one game. Momentum was on his side, but he came back in the fifth and held on to beat Gustafsson. The point is, don't imagine that Pete Sampras is going to win this easily as Thomas Muster wins the first game of the fifth and deciding set here of this first round men's singles match. We'll be back. <laughs> I do know. You guys are in front, so are we. Well done, Barry and Mary. This is 40-30 here with Pete Sampras serving. It's game point. Second game, fifth set. Down one up. Sampras holds on. Been a lot more effective behind his own serve lately. In the second set, he lost a lot of his own serve games and from there on in turned it on. Been a little more patient before he has got into the net cliff. And but what turned this around? Must have led two sets to love. It was close, the first two sets, four and four, but uh, Sampras didn't convert the big points at all. Uh, 
Great right shot. Sampras in the third set got the break, the first break of the third set, and led four games to two. And that sort of got him going until Muster broke back okay. before all. And at that stage, he lost eight of ten points, Sampras, and we thought he was gone. But look what's happened now. On the full run, he's able to get across there. Muster looking for it down the line. Sampras flicks it across in front of him. Oh, be an unbelievable display from this young man if he can come back and win this match. Not only the fact that he was down two sets to love, but he's not on his favorite surface. He's playing a, a great clay court player, a semi-finalist here two, two years ago, or last year, rather. He's a very, very talented young man, Sampras. That's on the line, 15.30, and what you see with him is what you get. He's just a very nice guy who is very laid back. Gazzard Holmes. Now, what he's done here, he's forced Muster to change his game, and Muster started to come to the net. Muster can't beat Sampras from the net. Not as fierce as he was a year ago when he Hold came down. into this because he had just won the Italian championships and he was a favorite really to win it. This year, of course, that's not true. He won only a couple of rounds, a uh, couple of matches all year, both of them at the Italian. So, as you said before, Fred, he feels that he's a couple of months away from being at his best. I'm very impressed with Pete Sampras' ability to stay back yeah, for as long as he has been able to and still be in the match. That last point, Cliff, you notice a slice backhand to keep the ball in play. He lost the point, but uh, that's a forgotten shot, and I think it's a, a good one against somebody that hits with a lot of top spin and doesn't come to the net that often. That slice backhand into the net. Two games to one on serve in the fifth set. Thomas Muster leading. We'll be back. 